next is Dr. Marco Fantozzi from Italy. He's our next speaker. He's a senior consultant at Hypervision. He's a leading ophthalmological surgeon with over 10,000 refractive surgeries, including the first refractive surgery with a femtosecond laser. He has published many scientific articles in specialized ophthalmological press, and he will share with us the pearls of success with his eye-creel phagic eye wells. Buonasera a tutti, and welcome to Italy to all my foreigners' colleague. I have no financial disclosure in this presentation. Icryl Fekic IOL range is, uh, this is the, the, the toric form and the spheric one. And the, the range is, is very interesting because it's going f uh, from plus 10 diopter to minus 25 diopter in the spheric form. The sizing you can see is from 11 millimeters to 40 millimeters with steps of 0 0.5 millimeters. Uh, of course, implantation size is posterior chambers. And the, the, uh, the torics go from plus eight sphere to minus 25 diopter sphere and up to six diopter of, uh, of astigmatism. So I am a refractive surgeon, of course, and, uh, and I, am a, I use a lot of smile technique for my patient. But what to do when you reach m m much than eight diopters of, the, of myopia? So, or if you find a cornea that is not suitable for corneal surgery. So uh, you are a refractive surgeon, you have to give an answer to the patient. And so my option is to implant a posterior eye, uh, posterior eye creel, I, I, I <coughs> eye creel, a posterior chamber uh, uh, lens. Uh, so, uh, but you have to take care that anterior chamber depth is more than 3.0 millimeters and the endothelial count is normal and there is no ocular pathology. The, my first experience with uh, fake IOL was with uh, Iris Claw, but uh, I can see that Iris Claw is a good result, but it's, uh, it's not very easy to implant, and, uh, but posterior uh, um, chamber uh, fake IOL is easier to implant. So what do you need to calculate uh, the power of the lens? You need, uh, of course, manifest refraction, corneal thickness, anterior chamber depth, and keratometry. And for the yaw size, it is very important to avoid the problem is the white to white. The yaw power, okay. The yaw power is affected mainly by the manifest refraction because the best spectacle correction. And you have to, to check the vertex correction on, on, on the spectacle. And the key reading is affect just a little the, the correction. So uh, to calculate the power, there is a formula, but on the website of uh, iCrill, you can find it and you can calculate the lens with all the data that you can, can, you can put. As you can see, the effect of Kairin is very small. With, you see that with minus 15 diopter, if you have a 42 K reading or 46 K reading, the difference is very slight. And in the, even the effect of a one millimeter error in ACD is also small, is around 0 0.6 diopter. So it's, it's not a, a big deal. The most important thing is to do right spectacle correction and is always is not always easy especially with the uh, patient with high myopia and not best refract with a, with not the best visual acuity when you are in doubt i choose the higher power because usually the patient are young and uh, there will be a regression over time 
So the biggest problem with the posterior chamber facial intraocular lens are the sizing. Because it, it is enough to measure, the, to measure the diameter of the horizontal sulcus. Sulcus is, is not in a circular shape because uh, a lot of times sulcus, the diameter is very different be between the anterior, uh, between uh, the meridian 100, uh, 0, 100, 180, and uh, the meridian uh, nine, uh, 90 degree. Twice with the same horizontal sulcus diameter, maybe larger for one as well for the others. So, so what, what can happen? A low voltage is not acute a problem if it is not lo low enough to cause a direct contact to crystal lens. lens. High voltage can cause a refraction deviation, light distribution and inflammation, and uh, in some cases uh, could ca cause a pupillary block. Okay. Another issue, important issue is how to center exactly the lens on the, uh, if uh, you, you use a toric one on the right axis. I used to use uh, in my clinic mainly the Varian system, but uh, you can use uh, the, uh, the Mendes uh, the ring uh, and you, you mark the meridian to zero, 180. This is, this is my study about my first 48, mm, 40 eyes in 20 patients. I started uh, the main diopter of myopia is 10, 10 diopter, uh, slight astigmatism. The corneal thickness uh, is uh, around 50 to uh, 525. The white to white is uh, around uh, 1173. Uh, Axial length uh, 26.89. You see, in this result, uh, the, the most impressive thing is that the all the patient could gain or, or one or two line, line of Snellen, and uh, the, the quality of vision is very high compared to the, the one with the spectacle lens. And uh, even the, the result in terms of uh, spheric equivalent is very good with only 0.2. 35, 36 deviation from the normal. This is a video. In this, in this clinic, I use uh, the Mendes ring. I mark, mark the axis. You insert the viscoelastic, they must be dispersive, or very, very, very. Uh, I, use, I try to use uh, only methyl cellulose. The ch you ch can charge the lens easily as a uh, in a cataract, and uh, the incision is 2.8. You see, I use, uh, I, I <coughs> usually I do it temporal. Put a viscoelastic. It's a very quick procedure if you are an expert anterior chamber surgeon. You see, it, uh, the lens is more rigid than the, the the vision ICL, so it's very difficult then the lens could rotate inside the anterior chamber and go upside down. And, and you see how, how it's easy to, to put inside, uh, under the iris, the optics. See, at this point, at this point you have only to rotate Okay, you rotate the, the lens on the right axis, yeah? So, and then you remove the viscoelastic, and that's, you put a, you put acetylcholine to restrict the pupil, so, uh, and the game is over. And the stability of bolting is impressive. In, uh, in six months, there is no change of bolting, the predictable bolting. And uh, what I, yes, I have to say, I am very happy of this lens and uh, the stability of vaulting keep me tranquil for the future. And uh, I think that uh, it's, it's, not, it's not easy that the, this lens can touch the crystal lens. Uh, so I think that could be less cataratogenous.
uh, than other kind of lens, but it is only the follow-up could say this, this for sure. Glaucoma and cataract are not common complications, so uh, pupillary block may still occur if the vaulting, uh, if you, you choose the, not the right sizing, but, and for this, I keep the patient under observation for two hours, I make the first of CT of the anterior chamber after two hours post the operation. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Dr. Fantozzi. Um, as the time is passing by and we want to give Professor Yildirim also the chance for his presentation, and it was a very clinical uh, um, presentation, I would like to proceed uh, due to time reasons. Thank you very much. Thank you.